Hello, it's Jesse here. We're going to work on the Triumph Trident here in this video, and we're going to work on trying to get this thing running. I uh, believe we're going to tinker with it a little bit to see what it takes to get it going. But right now, we are going to focus on taking off the the carburetors and this entire manifold assembly here because we know that the carbs are junked up a little bit, gunked up. So we're going to clean them up starting here, and then we're going to go from there. Um, we were messing around one day and we did a compression test on on the on the three cylinders there and we have good compression so that's a good sign um we overthinking about this whole thing we really think that the whole reason why this thing was off the road was because of that that whole push rod uh assembly with the clutch and stuff situation or pull rod um so we're going to try to get a, try to get this thing running so see what happens here We're taking this cover off now, and then we're going to be able to access the, the area here to where we can get to the air cleaner assembly. It really doesn't... It leaves a little bit more open room right here, because the other one's already off. But anyway, it should be pretty much straightforward, hopefully. There's a clip right here, and then this comes off. Clip that grabs holes and, oh, and then you tighten it up. Yeah, yeah, there's a split here. And then you're able to take the whole outer yeah. mesh off. And then we can take this off. There we go. I don't want to bend it. No. No. Our man, there's a piece of plastic down there. Yeah, I so plugged it oh, when we washed okay. it. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> I forgot. I thought maybe it was. I plugged that of... so we didn't get water in the motor. Smart. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. First, I thought it was like a piece of crap laying there. <laughs> so. Now there's two bolts in here. Now we probably don't have to take them off right now because I think there's enough room now to pull it all off. So we only probably need to take these loose, take the throttle cable off, and uh, go from there. Okay. Nothing, nothing fancy to know here on removing this. I've been backing it off. And you got to turn it in to loosen it. It's got a little slotted area it pops into. to do this then first. Yeah, that's it. It'll be easier this way. Ah. Yep, just like that. Just like that. We don't <laughs> want to lose this, so we'll let that dangle. Get everything back in this cover. Okay. We just unhooked the choke cable from here and moved it up out of the way. And then now we're going to work on Taking these, getting these chokes cables that go into the carbs out of the way too next. Uh, by, I don't know, it's all weaved in and out through up here. So we're going to have to try to figure that out and clean it up. But yeah, we're going to get it all apart right now. So these choke cables, they kind of, some of them go in behind this head steady here and get routed through here. So we're going to remove this head steady. It's loose anyway, I guess. So <laughs> it's supposed to be tight. So we're going to remove this and we'll be able to pull these out. And then remove this whole carburetor manifold group as a as a unit. So all right, there's that one. Here, I'll just 
I would loosen this one up here. Yeah, I got to hold the other side, I think. Goes through. Yes, oh, yeah. It's turning. Yeah. There we go. All right. Let's see what happens here. Got it back to out some. Get the back to screw out some. Both out some up here, I think. Yeah, okay. Unless you can wedge it by there you go, you got it. Alright. Okay, so there we go. We're taking loosening up the hose clamps here. We got one left here. And then we will attempt to take this off here. Oops, the spark plug wire is wrapped in through there too. Oh, great. <laughs> they go, it's, they got twisted around it, so we will go back through this one. <laughs> there we go. There, it's off. Let's go check it out. So this is the carburetor unit here out of the tr off the Trident, and... Uh, we did a couple different videos and stuff and sections in different areas where we worked on animal carburetors and this is pretty much just a small version of that one we were other ones we worked on so we probably won't focus too much on the carburetor aspect of it unless we come across something crazy or unless it's trident yeah other, but we'll, we'll talk about trident stuff like um the manifold what holds it all together all that How to kind sink of stuff. it and sinking and all that stuff too but um the in, the, in general carburetor. information on the carburetor we'll probably We've done a video on that before. So, anyway, what we found right away was one of these carbs is gunked up pretty bad. It's this one over here. And the other ones look kind of clean in there. And then we got this guy over here. So, anyway, we're going to work on taking this stuff apart. But before we do that, we want to talk about something in particular. That's really important. That's really important here with this. Right, so, the important details on this Trident manifold here. You got to be careful these air cleaners are held on by two bolts and they'll tighten up now what's important is is that people can tighten these so tight that it will bow this because it after all it is aluminum and it will bow it and it will it will throw the carburetors crooked and then they won't sink right and they won't Function properly. Yes, this won't work right. First thing I noticed right away is that this, it's, it's definitely not too tight. <laughs> I might have tightened it a little tighter than this, but it's definitely not too tight. They're both the same way. I would have brought them up to just kind of snug because they're sitting on they're sitting on rubber. So all you do is bring them up and you bring them up to a tight snug. Nobody, That's it. Nobody just flex. snug. It's like yeah. a flex and so stuff. They can, so it doesn't draw. It don't have to be tightened and torqued. So you're not going to lose any sort of air no. pressure or any sort of sucking or any of that because of that. So. No, it won't. And then it comes right off. These things come off. Little collets. Yep. There. That's all there's to it. Now, I can take these off, but I don't know if I'm gonna. Yeah, all right. If not in the way, I'm not gonna mess with it. So we got the float bowls off. This one here is probably the, the dirtiest one, but that was actually a clean carb. And then this one over here was probably the cleanest one. 
bowl and it was the dirtiest carb so it's kind of interesting but um another thing in particular with trident uh carburetors the idle adjustment screws they never were drilled of course and any of these angled ones here none of them have anything drilled in them and that's not nothing bizarre in this bike of course because the adjustments in this throttle body up here so it all pulls at the same time when you adjust it. it. Makes it easier for adjustment, obviously, because it would be really a pain in the butt trying to adjust every single one of them without this main one up here on the throttle body. So the the three main jets here, one out of each one, of course. Uh, they're all three plugged. Um, this one here was the least plugged. You can see a little bit of light through it, but these were all blocked off. <laughs> from crud especially this one um this one never started of course so we would have just put gas in and tried starting it obviously so it's a good thing we're going through the carbs right now just to to check it out see if we can get it running so all right so we just removed the rod here and then we're going to work on taking these caps off and pulling these this whole unit out together because we definitely got to clean the one carburetor up and we're going to clean all three while we're at it course see what the carb bores look like yeah the bores I don't see a lot of scratching at all on these slides but carburetors might have been fairly new or decent or yeah Scarred up and worn. Yeah, there's a lot of orange with this one. <laughs> yeah, it'll, be, it'll need some cleaning. Yeah, we want to make sure we get a nice clean. We got air passages we got to have clear, all kinds of stuff. So we'll work on that here. The well, other thing a Trident carburetor is different about is this piece that's that's sticking down. You know, like how the 850 was notched? Yeah, we talked about that in okay, the 850 the, the, video. Right, and the Trident ones are cut there too, but they're tapered at an angle. See that? Maybe not in this one very well, but they're, they're tapered. Oh, yeah. They're they're angled. I see what you're they're saying. They're slanted. Instead of being mid down, they're slanted. Instead of notched out, gone. They're angled. I think we can kind of see that. You, you can might be able to see it this way better. I don't know if you can see here. Let me get a light. see it in there or maybe I can get down here yeah we can it's, see it you can see, that yeah. see yep. how it's angled yeah that's tried in only all right so if you had one of these you had one of them kind of car bears on like your little bike that had one of these little small animals and you had this on there I guess you'd know this is for a trident instead <laughs> or vice versa well, that, right or what? yeah, well, it wouldn't be drilled for this, so you wouldn't be able to set your idle on a, like a 250 or a 500. You'd only be able to set your air for idle for your uh, right. pilot. Yeah, so, it still has the tickler and everything. Yep. So. so, Okay, at this point, all we're going to do now is we're going to clean them all up, make sure that all the passageways are open, and clean up all these parts. And we will put this back together. Yeah. The slides are real nice. A little wear, but boy, not much. See, just yeah. very little. Did they make the um the stay float stay up floats and yes. all that stuff for yeah. these smaller carbers? You can get anodized slides and we might put new anodized in here. It's just a little bit smaller than the other um yep. animals, but Yep. All right, well, if they make them for that, too, we will consider it, maybe. And this this gasket up here, rubbery gasket, is breaking down. See how it's 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 deteriorating? We're going to replace them. Huh. Yeah, okay. This one's half gone in here. And what that does is it leaks air in there, so. Yeah. We also noticed that the chokes weren't opening in the same time, either, but we'll deal with that when we get back, ready to put it back together, so. All right, well, 
Let's go on to clean these carbs. Got the carburetors all cleaned up, somewhat put back together right now. Um, yeah, one of them was really nasty, but they cleaned up really good. Anyways, so up here, we were looking at those, these gasket things are supposed to be up here, but actually what they had done is they had used silicone. At, in further inspection, we noticed that better. So, this is these are reels. And uh, anyway, it's like just all gooed up in there. Can you see that? There we go. And it's the same color, of course, as they held the rocker box covers it's on. Still held on by a little bit of silicone sticky. Okay. And it, you know, it just, it's all war. It just, it needs. It needs so we're going to clean it up, and this is what the original little rubber wash that's supposed yes. to or, it's supposed yeah. to be in there. And uh, that's that's the part number there. Or is that the part number? Yep, that's the part number. 622-126? Two two one two, one two yeah, it's an AML number. All AML numbers are 622. Okay. Anyways, we rebuilt the, the fuel line, too. Um, the original fuel line that we had was kind of kind of wore down and hard, hard as a rock. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so we got some rubber line on here. We're going to end up um, it's finishing a, it up. but It's actually Targon, which doesn't harden and crack with gas in it. Okay. So we started messing with this uh, group right here, and we're going to take this apart a little bit. The easiest way I figured out so far is to unwind the spring. get rid of the spring because you fight the spring. Also just unwinding it from the rod. Yep. Yeah, yeah. After you get it out there a ways. Yeah, because there's like a it's actually it's a like rod, this. it's not like a cable, so just like this. Yep, just sure. unwind it. And then take it out of there. Then inside of here there is a piece that looks like this that is locked in place by this spring like this so you got to push this down and pop it's also caught in this rod like right here like to give you an idea it's like this well, it's actually like this and like that okay so you got to press down like this and then push it out of there. So that's what you're going to be doing right here in a second. Yes. So it's going to be hard to see, but that's what I got to do. That's it. It's right down inside there. So, and of course you got to be careful. You might want to try flying out. Dang. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> you gotta fill it with it. Get it out of, you can get it out of one area and then it doesn't want to come out of the other area. Area. Getting it together is gonna be even harder. Oh. Yeah, I was lucky in the last one. Let me try holding it. Use a screwdriver to push and pull at the same time. There it goes. 
Yeah, they are. Dang, wow. Yeah, it's not easy. It didn't take that long, but yeah, whatever. That's how it goes together. And you gotta get this out of here. And turn this around. I suppose the little rods can get bent and stuff pretty easy, huh? Doing that? Yeah, you can. Well, you can. If you can pop it off of that rod. And you can keep pulling off. And you just move them out here. Ta da! Nice. So this we're gonna was, do that. Yeah. This was in the <laughs> middle clip. Okay. So we'll put it back in a minute. We're going to end up doing that to the other one, too, and get this all apart. But um, they really goobered this up with that silicone. They were just looking at this even more. And they got it all the way up in there, smashed in, and, and then all lubed in there. <laughs> so it's like... This one, too. It's way up in there. So we're going to have to get yeah. it all out of there. So anyway, we're going to put this together back the right way. Um, put the right pieces in. Hopefully it... It all works well <laughs> when we're done, but uh, I don't know why the why he must not have the right stuff and used silicone instead or something. But anyway, all right. So here's one of the tops there that had the silicone. They went all the way through the cap and then actually went down into the spring and touched uh, one of those little pieces. Yeah, this one here. It's a silicone on that. So that means it came all the way down through the spring and through this piece. And that's not good. And the other thing that's not good about silicone, I mean, this may have sealed at one time, but this dissolves with fuel. <laughs> so it was short-lived the amount of sealing it did do. So... Okay, so we're going to start trying to put one of these, put these all back together now. we got them all cleaned up, so... So first we gotta put the retainer on. And then the little rubber uh, seal washer thing. And then the cap. And after the cap, then we gotta have the slide. We're working on middle. Okay, so next step is next step is the spring. Then this piece, and this got to go with the little lip up so it holds the spring centered. Okay, then we got to put the, this in. And hook it. And then lock it with a needle. Now I gotta put a needle in there. Now that's the hard part. Gotta get it past this thing. There, like that. And I gotta turn this. Maybe. All right, yeah, bent so, needle nose. So having a bent needle nose helps us get that in there better. Now we're putting that piece back in, pushing down and locking at the same time. Like that. Got it, I think. Yep. Yep. Wow. Okay. It's easier going together than was taking it apart. I guess I can tell so. you that. All right, awesome. We got all three uh, slide units on here, and then we just all we had to do is just pull the pull the caps down and hook them on there like that. Or you can we showed it that you can assemble it on here as well too. So if you think it's easier to assemble it off of the big bulky piece, then you can do that as well because you just push this down like this and push up, and it'll come right off. Anyway, for right now, we're gonna plug off the the chokes because we're gonna just try to get this thing running. It's decent temperature out right now, and uh, we can always come back when we go to actually restore this bike a little bit more, clean it up more, and fix it up. We'll come back and probably 
put the proper uh, choke cables and stuff on then. Actually reroute it too. I think we're gonna move it up to the handlebars instead of on this on the side of the of the carburetor assembly. So I'm just finishing this up right now and then gonna slide them all together. There we go, we're working on just finishing this up here. We got the spring attached here. He's gonna put the the clip on over here. Try. Then we're gonna be ready to push it in all the way. And this whole segment, part of this part, it's all pretty much done. Loosen this this one here, so I have to check sink again. Make sure the sink is correct. Right. I use uh, oh, you use something, yeah, piece you of use wire. Small like wire. Yeah, the smaller the better. Okay, I got it to where it just slides in like a feeler gauge right here. Okay. Okay. You gotta check each one. Yes. I can't Oops. see. That one's loose. So then just adjust this one yeah. for right now. It's a lot. This one's tighter too. I didn't I didn't try to sink this. I just cracked this nut loose a little bit. And then you can move this pretty easily. And then tighten it back up a little. There we go. You gotta know what to feel. If it all feels the same, then it's the same. I mean, you feel it when you're going to find it. You gotta remember that it just goes, this is rounded, so the smallest, the lowest area is gonna be the loosest, and that's how it's gonna feel. It just has a little bit of drag on it. Yeah. Well, you could make it really loose, or you can make it really tight. It depends on how you want them sink. But if anyway, it's really so. tight, you'll hear this slide go click, click. Well, then you're moving the slide. You don't wanna move the slide. Okay. There we go, then. So, there we go. Get it where it needs to be. You're halfway up the hole. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I feel it there. All right, cool. So we've got the fuel lines all hooked up here. Just got to tighten them up. Um, these aren't high pressure, so we're not too worried about any sort of like clamps and stuff on here, but we'll probably do something. Um, probably like maybe zip ties or something because it, it's clean. And a little minute holder, and it's not high pressure, so you don't have to worry about the zip tie, like not holding pressure or something. So, anyway, we're about ready to put this back on the bike now. Well, there we are. We got the, the carburetor set attached to the motor right now, tightened down. We got to hook up the, the fuel lines yet. Uh, we got to run the. No, we do have the throttle cable hooked up. I forgot about that. We got that ready to go. So next thing we'll be doing here is hook up the fuel line to clean out the tank. The tank is like got old gas in it, so we're gonna wash it out with with uh, some fuel, some new fuel, and clean it out, clean it out a little bit better on the inside. We had that cream problem. I think we have a bunch of pieces of cream all broken down inside of it. That 
that uh, tank liner crap. Um, not a fan of that, but it could be someone's treasure. It could be someone's enemy. It doesn't matter to me. It just I don't prefer it. So we're going to get rid of that. And then um, we're going to drop the oils in this thing. Put fresh in. We'll get ready to start it. See what happens. So, um, oh yeah, we got the battery in, of course. We'll probably rob the battery from the Tiger or something just to get this thing started. But uh, anyway, let's get going on that. So before we get going on starting this thing up, um, like we, I was just saying that we got this all hooked up. We got this thing lubed up pretty good too. Now it just snaps back and forth. Unlike before, it just kind of like was like resistance and it would hold still in certain spots. Um, right here we got a oil pressure gauge assembly kit here. We're going to run on this bike because, well, you were saying that you want to know what we have for oil pressure because we don't know nothing about this bike. And and uh, you were saying something about the, the bearings. Yes, if the bearings are worn, the oil pressure will be low. We gotta have we gotta have good oil pressure. Yeah. That'll tell us the condition of the lower end. And so we just want to make sure the motor runs good. And it's a good idea to have a oil pressure gauge on a triple because it's nice to know what your oil pressure is. Yeah, so we'll probably mount it up here someplace. Probably in the middle here or something. I'm not sure exactly where, but um, we just, I mean, because if we don't have good pressure, we can have a problem with the main bearing pretty much, right? Yep. So if, it, if it's got low oil pressure, the motor is going to have to get rebuilt. So, yeah. Well, we should, we don't know nothing about this motor. We're going to find out as soon as we get it kind of like running. So, anyway, let's get going on. Uh, we'll drop in the oils and stuff here, we're hooking all this up. So. You gotta drop the oil first, then you put this in. The instructions say that you, you shouldn't put this in unless you're at it during an oil change because when you pull out the plug, oil will run out and make a mess. For where this goes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. There we are, we're draining the oil here. And then uh, if there's any in the tank, it sounds kind of empty. If not, it's all wet sump in the bottom Looks of the Looks like it's pretty much empty. All right, well. <laughs> Okay, I so guess we're going to drain all the oil out of the bottom of the engine. So that pretty much ends that part. So here we are. We're removing the bottom plate of the motor. Um, it's a little bit different than the than the Tiger was or even the Bonnevilles are. This is where the like the like the oil in the frame engines or bikes. They uh, have the same kind of plate, but it's a little bit different looking, of course, but it's in the frame at the bottom of the sump in the tank in the middle of the backbone of the frame. And this is a dry sump motor, but chances are there's going to be there's going to be oil in the bunch of oil in here. Oh, yeah, Lincoln can see dripping right now. That's what, yeah. <laughs> so let's get a pan there. Yeah. There we go. There's a little filter in there, isn't there? There's a gauze. A gauze? A couple. There'll be two gaskets. There'll be the sub plate. Then there'll be two gaskets and uh, then a metal uh, strainer, let's call it. So this gauze. motor, it, it still, uh, it still um, bleeds into the primary just like the, the Tiger and the Bonneville does, right? Yep. The three little communication holes or whatever. Yep. Oh yeah, look all. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna start coming out here pretty good here now. Well, so far the oil looks apple. It's clean. Well, I'm just gonna let it do that for a while. See how it doesn't want to fall out of there. No, otherwise you're gonna lose that plate down at the bottom of the pan anyway yeah it's not a real I mean it's dark but I mean it's not no, like it's not I've seen dirtier there we go we'll let this drain for a I while a what's that See how it tapers down here and gets 
it gets deeper over at this end. Yep. Okay. The reason for that is so that the oil that drains runs down to there and there's a pickup pipe right here. And okay. so the deep area has got to be in the pickup. If you put it if you put it backwards, it'll be really close to this and you'll starve the return from from uh, getting uh, picking up the oil good. Huh. Now we gotta get this off of here. Screen? Yeah, without tearing it. I don't wanna hurt it. This is a gasket here. I don't care about the gasket so much. We're putting a new cover on it anyway that's got a drain hole in it. So we don't have to do this every time. That's cool. Like a drain plug? Yeah, it's got a drain plug. The new plug. cover does? Yeah. That's cool. We should be able to, once yeah. this is removed, maybe we can look up inside the motor, maybe even. Yep, we should be able to. There it goes. I don't know what much what we'll, what we'll really see very much of, but. It's a screen. Oh, yeah. There's a pickup tube right there. And then if you look up in here, you should be able to see a connecting rod somewhere. I'll probably check the it center, out, and then the we can rod. we can look back at this footage and see for ourselves up in there. But yeah, since it's it's dripping pretty good yet. So yeah, we'll come back and look at that. All right, so this uh this plug here, or actually this not here, this this piece here adjusts the chain in the primary, and then back here we're gonna drop the primary fluid which is the same as oil but it's on this plug here he's on which was kind of looked like it was loose no it was tight so it's gonna get new oil in there too brass yeah i have to have all new oil All right, we'll let that drain for a while. All right, so this uh, this plug right here, this bolt here, we're taking out, and that's where we're going to be putting the the the, um, the oil line for the oil pressure gauge. It's going to come into there. That's where it's going to get its oil pressure from. So we're going to be working on that next. So what are these bolts for? They're main main uh, bearing oil galley so they're under full pressure from the pump so either one would work we're gonna use either that one, one but this one is closer to the frame and it's it's hard to get the bolt in there because it's this one's more open oh i see yep so we're gonna use it like a regular old bolt. Gun. That's what I thought too when I saw the head of it. I thought it was a bolt. <laughs> but it must be, huh? Yeah. It's not it, like MPT or anything. Uh, plug. Yep. Alright. Well, we just got done running the, the line in this protective hose here, housing thing, because we don't want this to get overheated and melt our line, because this thing will drain in seconds if it, if it leaks while it's running. And then 
This has a hole in it. It's oh, a pipe. Banjo bolt, huh? Yeah, and it's got a hole there. See it? Yep. And that lets a lot of pressure through there. Where do you think you need a, a washer on there? Well, it's got two uh, nylon, wa nylon washers there yeah. for sealing. Usually banjo bolts like that for like brake lines and stuff get copper okay. washers and stuff. I suppose you should put this. I don't know. It's just going to rotate it up here and then wire tie it to the frame like, like so. Yeah, I think so. Right like that. Kink it. Well, I guess it maybe it can come through here. Yeah, we might have to. And then come up through here. Okay. Just bring it out for now. Go ahead. Will this fit through here? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, rotate it back up, and then. No, oh, that ain't gonna work. Is that? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah, just pull it. Pull the hose. Well, you can leave the hose there. Yeah, that's gonna work. It's not binding on it now. All right, we're going to route our hose now and go from there. There we are, we're hooking it up to the gauge now. It's just a knurled thing, I guess. Yeah, we got to tighten it. Yeah, so we pretty much just routed it through there so it didn't bind on anything, gave a little bit extra. So when the when you move it left and right, it doesn't like tighten up and then pop off. <laughs> so and we checked it both left and right, and it looks like it's gonna be fine. Who knows what size this is? Not that. Oh it does have a hex. Yes. I didn't see that at first. Yes, it does. Now get on there. It's not a seven. So we're looking for, unless it's mass standard, no, we're looking for an eight. <laughs> Probably don't have one here with me. We don't have an eight. Hmm. Well, we're going to wrench and tighten it up the rest of the way here in a minute. It should get on the. There you go. 
There you go, you get it. I assume you just tighten it up. Yeah, this should it'll tighten up till it stops. Right. That's what I got it there. There we are. There. Yeah. I'll work on putting the sump stuff back together and get some well on this thing. There we are. Putting the plug back in. Just make sure you check that that uh, gasket that's on there. It's actually copper on this one. Make sure it's tight. Yep. Yeah. Don't over tighten it. Yeah, definitely don't. Yeah, definitely don't over tighten them. No. Don't take much. It's going into aluminum. It's a steel plug. Tight. It'll just destroy <laughs> the, the the aluminum part of the engine there. So yeah, we're just cleaning this up now and getting some gaskets out and then put that together. Get the new sump plug. So we get a gasket on the motor there, and then then there's that screen piece, and then there's another gasket, and then there's the plate I'm gonna put on. But we we're gonna look up in there, so let's go ahead and check that out. Get the oil out of the way so I don't drop the camera in the oil. This is what we're putting on. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Well, so here's what the engine looks like inside there. We'll look at this footage in a little bit. See if we see anything. If it's bad or anything. But yeah, nice view of the motor in there. Alright, so for our plate, comes with black gaskets. Black gaskets. Nice milled the machine. Copper washers. Aluminum plate there. Yeah. You can look at it. Yeah, sure. Let's go look at it. So there's the recessed area, and there's the drain plug right in that recessed lower area there for that pickup tube to go into. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Reason. The top end was like the like the the rocker box cover and stuff. They're all just riddled with RTV, and so was the <laughs> so was the carburetors. But this wasn't, so I don't think they were into this, which is probably okay. Um, but anyway, we're just gonna. Well, what do you? Th well, what do you think? You know, I think we should put some. We could put if we put anything on it. We put that Loctite stuff on it. Yeah, the problem is, it's it's wet. Yeah. It's going to continue to be wet. And you're supposed to put that stuff on in a dry, clean environment. So We don't really need anything on it. I mean, I'm mean, i guessing we're just going to do this. Gasket. Sump. Gasket. Deep spot to the rear. Yep, just like that. Like that. Okay, get a bunch of washers out. Also put new washers on. Just the washer did not. 
Oops. Yeah. Liquid over here. And then it'll kind of stay. Yeah. There you go. Now we can work on them all. All right. We'll work on getting the hardware on, and then we'll go from there. Pretty nice plate, but these are the original nuts that come with it. They come with washers, which you just saw us put on. But these nuts have like a rounded top to them. And the machined out area for the, the relief area for the nuts isn't big enough for a wrench to sit on. So it's kind of difficult to get these tight. I suppose that if I was to grade this thing, that would be the only downfall of this whole thing so far. But I'm not here to promote this or not promote it, but it's, it's a pretty cool thing. Nice that it has a drain plug. It's going to be a lot better than having to take this off every time this happens, like so, wet sumps and stuff. So, anyway, we're working on trying to get this stuff tight right now. I suppose if we would get different nuts or whatever, we could get it to go, but this is the nuts we have, so... Yeah, you probably get on it. Don't round them, and you gotta get them tight. Yeah. There's definitely no room for a wrench to get there. Might need a different knot on there. Yeah. Once without the. Full uh, hex nut without the rounded, like flex lock look to it, or yeah, like instead of my lock, which is a little bit deeper. There we are. Get them all. Yep. I think so. There we go. Alright, so we just popped off this plug here that has the oil filter in it. I gotta get a needle nose and pull it out of there. Right inside there. And we're gonna make sure that's clean and stuff. There we are. Wow. They don't look very old. Or maybe that's how they're supposed to look after a long period of time. Maybe they don't get there's submerged in oil all the time. They don't get all rusty and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and dirty and clogged I'm up. I'll leave it in there for now. I'll pick it out later. But yeah. Okay, we're going to start with a fresh one. Now we got to soak it. Yeah, and then there's the cap has like a, a spring in it holding it pressurized. So anyway. Don't overlook that. Make sure that filter gets changed out. So on these uh, tridents, uh, this is very important, this next part here I'm about to say. Well, we, got on, we got on the side stand right now because we're going to prime this because the filters on tridents are on the on the uh, feed side. Um, most filters on in vehicles and any other bike, it's on the on the drain side. Or a return side, I mean, and uh, that's why it's very vital to make sure we prime this because uh, this filter. Because if we don't prime this filter and we don't put prime this hole, it will starve the engine for a period of time until it finally gets there, and that will be too long and it'll destroy stuff on the inside of this motor. So, very important. Pretty much I said that right, right? Yep. Okay. All right. All right, it took to both of us, but the procedure was, we got this all back together. But anyways, the procedure was, is I took it off the side sand, leaned it weight over. He poured oil in there to prime it. We uh, took the filter and soaked it in oil for a period of time. And then we put the wet filter in. And then we put the cap on, tighten it, and we set it back on the side stand. So, that's about the best way to do it, that we thought of anyway.
We got a few things to do here yet before we fire this up, but we got a battery in here right now. And uh, we did turn the key on and we pretty much got all the everything works. Um, there was a couple bulbs that were out. There was a bulb missing in the taillight. But other than that, <laughs> they're, um, yeah. Yep, we got the taillight to work. The bulb was missing in there for some reason. I don't know what the deal was there. Taillight works. I guess you can't tell if it's getting brighter or not. Oh, we got to turn the key Oh, you can bypass it with the switch up here. Well, the headlights work only by this switch because it's only an off and on, and all this is is for ignition and most of the electrics. And uh, so for headlights, you got to switch this on to pilot. This is on for headlights. That's the little bulb in there yeah. lighting up. Yeah. And there's the actual headlight. And the brights. Okay, cool. And then I believe the blinkers all worked. And yeah. but anyway, um, yeah. So it's not all butchered up with electronics in this thing so far. Now we need to check for spark and stuff. We want to do that before we just start trying to kick this thing over and find out there's nothing go working right. So we're gonna do that next probably. So we're gonna we got the oil all filled up in the bike here and then tried it and we're gonna be working on checking for timing. So far we have. We're going to be checking for tar timing and spark. So, so far we have spark on the on this number one here, or this cylinder here for sure. And then we'll be going from there. We um, we're actually having the the tank for this bike repainted by a professional uh, a guy that repaints a lot of British bikes and a lot of stuff around lo kind of localish down by where we get a lot of our parts from. Um, but anyways, uh. It's going to turn out really sweet, but for right now, we don't have a tank to, to, to run fuel in this bike to start up, so we put a Norton tank on here for right now, So, because uh, it, it fits there. It'll sit there really good, and we'll be able to run one pet cock and just fuel the, the system this way and be able to fire it up, so I know it looks crazy like that. It ain't right, but <laughs> it won't stay like that, so, but... Yeah, it's kind of neat looking though, actually. Interesting looking, for sure. So, anyway, we're going to get going on getting this thing running. So, we got it pulled up to 38 degrees before top dead center. Yeah, and that's um, number B. And number B, on the, B. On the, in the window here. Number B on that on that position there. And then, we're just checking the spark on this one, like I was mentioning a little bit ago. But, um, let's go ahead and look at that, I guess. Turn the key All on. All we got to do is turn the key on. Yeah, go ahead. And then, we should be able to set this into the notch and that should spark when I set it full dead see can you see it I guess that's not picking. yeah there it went yeah it's sparking yep so, so then what we can do is we perfectly can... timed now you can run around to each each firing order and check that that way that way but since this number one is right, um, we're going to assume that the rest of them are probably okay. It was timed up. It was probably it, a running bike. Yeah, it looks really nice in here. And I did check each point for firing a plug, and they will all three fire a plug. All right, so this is your, your far right cylinder, and this is the... Black and white. Yeah, black and white, right. And the wires come looping around from here to there. Yep. They come in and then, from the rear back in here. They all come in right through there. Right, and then the center cylinder is your red and black one, yeah, which is this one here. And then the black and yellow one, which is this point over here, is your far left cylinder. And these all look really nice, so there's a good chance this might fire up as soon as we get going here. So we're going to close we, it all back. Well, we have spark on all three of them, so... So we've got the plug wires back, uh, plugs back in, the plug wires on, and uh, we're gonna put some fuel in it. Um, we got it with it stag, being stack timed, and we checked in the spark. We have a really a lot better chance of it possibly firing if it's going to fire when we go to try to start it. So um, we're gonna throw some fuel in this sweet Norton tank we're using on this Triumph. But <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, it should work. Anyway, for what we're going to use. I'm going to put 
put enough in for pet talk to work. Yep. Yelling or so. I can always get it back out later. Is that enough? Yeah. Probably. Uh, I can't see it in there. It's about, I don't know, midway up. It's a high rider tank, so it's kind of hard. It's different than, than trying to judge things with a, with a roadster tank or an interstate tank. That's enough. Huh? Yeah, that's probably why. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, we got the... All right, the key on. Red lights on. Red lights on. You kind of see it there. We're going to check for oil pressure here by seeing if the oil light goes off. Yep, there it went on. Okay, so we got oil pressure. All right, good. And it holds pressure for quite a while. Let's see if it, yeah. I still got the key on, so let's see if it comes back on. It will eventually. I'll get the shadowing out of there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's holding well. There it goes. There, it finally came back on. Oh. Well, it's just slowly bleeding down, see? There we go. All right, sweet. All right, we got a good chance here. All right, we're turning fuel on here, and we're going to prime the carburetors. Yeah, the gasket's already soaking up down there. Good. Oh, that's one. That fuel coming out, the left one. Um, you can have to get the right. I've got gas coming out there. But you have to get the center one. It took a while on the other one over there. That one was dripping out of here. See? There it is. Oh, yeah. It's coming up there. I see that. It's getting wet. That's probably good. Okay. okay. Should we start it? Yeah. Or try? Yeah, let's try it out. So, there you go. Ignition. Wants to run. Yeah, I don't want to stay. Yeah. Sixty pounds.
right, well, there we go. We got it running, and it runs well somewhat. I mean, we didn't go test ride it, of course, but we, had a, we got a fan on it to keep it cool because we're inside of a building. And we unplugged the charger that was on the battery, and we proved that the, the charging system's working as well. And there was some smoke up here we saw in the video a little bit ago, but it was probably some oil drippage that was on the pipes. Um, yeah, it sounded pretty good. So anyway, this pretty much wraps this section of the this whole video up. So I yeah, until we get working on the primary and stuff and getting that clutch working because that's another reason why we didn't ride it, of course. So yeah, we gotta go in a long ways to get get that all fixed up. So you'll see that coming up. But hope you enjoyed everything here, and we'll see you again soon. And anyway, the the tank for this thing that we we're having to repaint it by a. A guy that does uh, a lot of British bikes and stuff, um, which we're excited about. It's going to turn out really well. Um, I'm not sure when we get that back, but it'll be coming up. So, anyways, see you again soon.